Today, let's replace the speakers in my 1995 GMC Suburban, aka the GMT400 platform, aka the 1995 through 1999 CK1500s, aka the CK2500s, and even possibly the 3500s, aka the Sierra Silverado Suburban, Tahoe, Yukon, and even Escalade. Yes, they are all the same vehicle, and all of them are gonna have this set up right here. <laughs> And you know, as bad as these things suck, which they do, I have to hand it to GM. They put a component speaker system in the front, at least, of all of these vehicles. At least I think it's all of them. If it's not, let me know down in the comments below. From everyone that I've seen, they all have the tweeter in the control panel, you know, where you roll your windows down and unlock the doors, and then there's a separate woofer down in the kick panel of the door. Without further ado, I am Jimmy, this is One Road, and it's raining today. Raining pretty good, guys, and I gotta say, I I absolutely love this stuff. Quick shout out for the rain. Thank you, Lord. If any of you guys out there are like me and absolutely love the rain, comment below, let me know, hit the thumbs up for rain. So if you drive the GMT 400, the 1995 through 99, you know, all those vehicles that I mentioned, you know that the speakers in those trucks suck. They are made of paper that is thinner than the paper plates in my kitchen. And yes, they do need to be replaced. Well, if you want like a decent sounding, you know, audio system in your car. I just heard thunder. Yeah. Love that. So I went to Crutchfield's website and I was researching all their different speakers that they say would fit into my vehicle. And there was a lot of them. And basically what I figured out was this. The woofer hole is about a six and a half inch hole. So it'll fit a six and a half inch speaker. I was a little worried with that thinking that I needed maybe like a five and a half inch, but six and a half inch fits perfectly. If you want to get an all-in-one with the woofer and the tweeter and mid, possibly mid-range in one speaker, that might be a heck of a lot easier than doing what I did, which was got a component system to kind of fit in the factory locations. Overall, component speakers are going to give you a better sound because the woofer and tweeter and all that are, I, I don't know, I, I guess it just does. That being said, the combination speakers don't give you a bad sound by any means, and those are actually a lot easier to install, and I would probably recommend to go that way. The speaker system that I chose was by Infinity, and it was the Primus PR6510CS. I chose Infinity because way back in the day, I drove a 2003 Dodge Ram. 1500 pickup and it had the upgraded infinity sound system I couldn't believe how good that sound system sounded so I chose to stick with the infinities just because of that I mean I know that they sound great a lot of people love them and they make great car audio speakers so this is the first of many audio upgrades for this 1995 GMC Suburban now I'm not trying to break the bank with this I just want to get a really good upgraded sound system in this truck but I'm not trying to go you know audio file with this stuff just good upgrade from what it was. And uh, for what it was, that's not gonna be hard. So the first thing you're gonna have to do with these trucks is get that door panel off. Now, if you look on the armrest, there's like a little pull handle there and there's two screws, you're gonna have to pull those out. They're Phillips, grab your screw gun and zip those things out. After those screws, there's a little triangle piece of trim that covers the access port for the side mirror. That has one pin in it or clip, whatever you wanna call it. You're gonna to need to get that thing off. You can probably do it just by sticking your fingers in there and pulling it straight out. After you've pulled that piece off, now we can move on to the actual door panel. And for that, I absolutely recommend a trim panel tool. You're gonna to need something like this. You gotta slide it behind the panel where the pins are and pop those pins out. If you just try to yank on that thing by hand, you're probably gonna to start breaking the actual points that the clips clip into on the door panel and you might start deforming the door panel itself. So it's very important when taking the door panels off of these trucks because of their age, you're gonna need the proper tool. I would say go to Harbor Freight, they sell a whole kit. It's like, I don't know, under $10 or something like that. Guys, don't forget, check the description below and I'll put links to everything we're talking about in this video. You should be able to look down where that little triangular piece of trim was and see some of the pins. You can start there or you can just kind of get that trim tool behind a part of the panel and just start prying on it just ever so slightly. And that should be able to kind of tell you where the pins are. Uh, and then once you know that, then you can get that tool back there and start popping those clips out. Be very careful. Make sure you have some super glue on hand. I actually ended up 
breaking off, just as I was telling you, one of the tabs on my door panel that holds the clip. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. But I was able to super glue it back on. It was a perfect fit. So I let that sit all day while I did the job. And that made it a really tight hold. And when I put the door panel back on, everything went on perfectly fine. Another note here is those little pins that hold the door panel in. You can buy those on Amazon, guys. If you didn't know, you can buy like a pack of 50 of them for 10 bucks. Again, I'll put a link down in the description below. The last thing you're gonna do once you have all those pins popped out is you're gonna lift up on the door panel. There's a little lip on the top that slides right over the windowsill. Once you get that off, you can kind of slowly but surely yank that whole door panel out of there. But you're gonna wanna make sure you disconnect all the electrical connections too. And that being said, I already forgot, but the little control switch, you're gonna have to lift up on one end of that. You're gonna be lifting up on the side that doesn't have the speaker grill, the grill for the tweeter. The other side, the back of it, you're gonna pop up on that with your trim tool and that thing should just pop right out. Disconnect those electrical connections. You're also gonna to need to disconnect the little light bulb that's in your light in the door panel. And then finally your door panel will come off. All right, so now we have the door panel off and you can see the woofer down there. The woofer is held in simply by a little clip and all you have to do is jam a screwdriver in there and pry that sucker out, but that thing just pops right out. Disconnect the electrical connection on the back of that and you're good with that. Also, looking at that little control panel with the window switch, that's where the tweeter is located and you should be able to see where you can actually twist the tweeter to get that out. You might have to pull up on those little tabs, but you can twist the tweeter and then it pops right out. <laughs> Twist the tweeter, that could be a good band name. All right, so depending on whether you're gonna get like an all-in-one speaker system or a component system like I did, the rest of your install may be the same as mine, but it may be a little different. The biggest problem with the component system install here is that you have to go and chase back wires to try to find the original two wires in the wire loom that have been branched off to the tweeter and the woofer. The reason why is you have to install what's called a crossover. Any component speaker system that you buy should come with its own crossover. And the thing is, is you gotta find those original two wires coming from the stereo because those original two wires go into the inputs of the crossover and then your outputs come from the crossover to the woofer and also to the tweeter. So that's where the wire chasing comes in. You're gonna have to cut back a lot of that electrical tape and search for those same colored wires all the way back to the junction point because each one of these wires, in this case, were green and darker green. They actually just junction off to the two separate speakers. For me, in the component system install, I had to cut out those junctions so I had nice clean wire coming straight off of the factory head unit. And once I found that, I had to pull enough slack and I could strip the wire back and put those right into the top of that crossover. Surprisingly, with these trucks, there's a perfect location for a crossover. Well, as long as your crossover is as small as mine was. I was able to use double-sided sticky hook and loop to attach these crossovers to the door and with that door panel, it would fit perfectly onto the woofer install. My system came Came with a speaker bracket and I decided to use that speaker bracket so what you're gonna want to do is line that thing up you got to put it on the door you got to look for actually these trucks have little dimples where screws should go or could go and I bought these awesome little self-tapping self-drilling screws got those from Home Depot they were very cheap I think under three dollars or something like that anyways go ahead and line up your bracket make sure that you have you know the correct tabs cut off and make sure your bracket fits screw in your bracket and then look for the spots on your bracket where you're gonna need to to screw the speaker into. You may need to bust out a drill bit at this point to drill through the metal just to give those screws kind of a cleaner, you know, push through, you know, so they don't wander on you when you're trying to screw them in. But it is pretty self-explanatory putting this woofer into the door. You simply put that bracket on and you put the speaker onto the bracket. For me, as far as wiring that woofer, I chose to actually solder it on there. Now, to be honest, it wasn't my first choice. I was trying to go the easy route and use little electrical connectors, but I just couldn't get them to fit properly. So I decided, hey, I'm just gonna solder this wire on there. And speaking of speaker wire, also at Home Depot, I picked up this 100 foot roll of 18-2 speaker wire. Now, what I like about this stuff is, as far as I can tell, it's actually copper on the positive side and it's made in the USA. All right, so after I soldered on the positive and the negative to the back of the woofer, you can also connect that straight up to the crossover. Like I was saying, there's a dedicated port for the woofer and a dedicated port for the tweeter. Just look for the plus and minus, put them in the right spot and you're good to go. On to the tweeter, that's where this gets interesting. If you have an all-in-one system, then you're done. All you gotta do is now work on getting your door panel back on. But if you have a component system, now you have to work on placing that tweeter. And in this case, we do have a dedicated spot for the tweeter, which is good. However, you're gonna have to do some custom work to try to get that tweeter to actually fit in that dedicated spot. Not such a big deal though, if you have a Dremel. <laughs> 
I do recommend getting a Dremel. That thing made quick work out of putting that tweeter in. The driver's side, I didn't have the Dremel, and it took me a long time to get that thing in. But surprisingly, my kit from Infinity with these speakers came with a bunch of different mounting options for the tweeter, and it came with the perfect solution where I was able to get that tweeter bracket installed into the factory location, screw on the back of it, and it all fit like a glove. I couldn't believe how good it fit. Now, another thing, you're gonna need a good set of wire strippers to do this job. And also, if you're gonna use any sort of terminal I would suggest a dedicated crimping tool. I got my set at Harbor Freight. They're the Doyle brand nine and a half inch crimping pliers and those things work amazing. Okay, so now that we have our tweeter set, you can go ahead and put that electrical panel aside. At this point, what you're gonna wanna do is start buttoning everything up. You're gonna wanna make sure that your wires are all wire taped back together and in the correct spot. You may need a few zip ties, but you're definitely gonna need a lot of electrical tape to get that stuff all back together. Once you have that wiring back together and in its proper location, you may need a little duct tape to put the plastic barrier for your door back to where it was. And now we can carefully work on getting our door panel back in place. When I say carefully, I mean carefully because those little pins stick out on that door panel and the last thing you wanna do is accidentally poke a hole through your brand new woofer installed in the door. So start with the top, putting the top back in the windowsill and leave that base hanging out like a good six inches to a foot. Once you got that top panel put back on, you can start pushing the pins back in and everything should be good. Oh, one more thing to note here, make sure you test the system out before you start putting the door panel back on. That way you'll know that you've got the right connections, everything is is in the right spot and you haven't cut the wrong wires or anything like that. I would definitely test for the window going up and down, making sure that your speaker isn't too deep. Just overall fit and finish, make sure everything is nice and tight, nothing's rattling and everything works properly. Then you can put that door panel back on and be confident that everything is gonna work and all you have to do is start cranking some tunes. Now for me, with this install, I still have the factory head unit. I don't even have a CD player in this thing, guys. So I'm listening to not only a crappy signal from the FM radio, but if I wanted to listen to anything else, it's a freaking tape. So you have to realize that the speakers are only gonna sound as good as the signal going into them. That being said, I do have to say on the clear FM signals, this speaker setup is amazing. Tons of bass, incredibly clear. The tweeters sound incredible. Just an overall powerful sound sounding set of speakers. I'm really impressed. I do still have a lot of upgrades coming, new speakers for the back doors, a new head unit, and I don't know, maybe even somewhere down the line, a sub or something like that. But for now, this is upgrade number one. Well, hey guys, if you drive the same platform truck as I do, I hope this video helped you somehow figure out what you're gonna have to do to replace your front speakers. If it did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, leave a comment below, and let me know. Also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. You can check me out on Instagram, at One Road Garage. You can check out my website, oneroadgarage.com. And until the next time, guys, thanks again for watching. This is One Road, I'm Jimmy, peace.